I am very excited to finally be able to show off Sling TV. I've had access to it for about a week now, and I've been heavily testing it. I'm going to break this review into a few different categories. I'm going to test it on a Roku 3 and demonstrate most of the services with the Roku 3. I am also then going to show it on a Nexus um, Android tablet, my Nexus 7, and on an Android TV box using the G-Box Q. Uh, they all work great with their Sling apps, um, but just for demonstrations, I'm going to break it down using the Roku 3 at the beginning here. So this is the general menu. You get to this when you're in the stream just by hitting the OK button. It brings it up. Um, you can switch through the channels. There's currently 20 of them. At release, there will be 21, which will include the maker content. Currently, that's not in the beta testing that I have access to. When you scroll down, you can flip through upcoming shows and check them out. Uh, by going up, pressing on the up for the Roku, it brings you into the on-demand section. Um, and you can scroll through. Now, before I get too far in depth, you know some are missing um, images for their names. And some only have one or two shows. Some have full seasons. It varies. They have stated that when it goes public, there will be more on-demand content for the channels available. And every channel will have on-demand, is what they said. So that's good news. The, um, the pausing, playing, all that does work on some of the channels, like the cooking channel here. But when you go to others like ESPN, oop, I just went back to the cooking channel. There we go. Others like ESPN do not load or pause, rewind, or fast forward. You just get this message saying this action is not available on ESPN. Uh, Cartoon Network, a few others also do not allow it. Um, so, unfortunately, that's head mess. I asked them about it, and they stated that it is a contractual issue, and they're working on it. Um, right here is uh, something I want to talk about. ESPN is just a watch ESPN feed. There's no commercials in it. I asked them, is that what they meant when they said access to watch ESPN? That it would just be streaming watch ESPN through the service? And they said, no, you will be able to log in to watch ESPN, even with the basic package, you will not need to pay for the sports package to have watch ESPN access. Currently that's not available, they're currently tying their system to ESPN, and they hope to have that up before the public release. They did tell me though that the sports package will include additional um, ESPN channels, but they don't have any information past additional ESPN channels at this time. Hopefully ESPN U, ESPN News, and others will be available in it. For me personally, I would pay $25 just for all the ESPNs. The rest would be a, a bonus. Um, let's kind of keep clicking through here. Uh, the quality, let me jump over to some of the smaller ones like uh, Disney Junior. The quality is very good. Watch ESPN, Hulu content. It does allow you to jump around back and forth in the different um, qualities. You can either set it to automatically detect the quality or you can set it to um, a high, low, medium, and so forth. And you do that when you're in just the regular show by hitting the star key on your Roku remote and going over to your settings. A few great settings here. They do have the ability to set different um, closed captioning. You can go in here and um, name your device, though I'm unsure of what feature that is for. It allows you to say, set custom one, kitchen, downstairs, family room, and so forth. I imagine at some point you may be able to send content directly to a specific box, or hopefully it would be kind of cool if you could set parental controls on the box that are available to the kids, but then in your, in your room or in your study, you wouldn't have to have any parental controls. The other cool feature is Smart Zoom. I'll demonstrate this in a little bit, but it will automatically detect if the um, feed is full image or um, a 4x6 or whatever it's called, 4x3, the box smaller square. So that is a nice little feature. It works really well, honestly. Um, there is a support number in there where you can call 24-7 um, for tech support and a screensaver um, option too. They do not have sleep timer. The screensaver does not appear to actually stop this um, stream, but they said that they've passed that idea along and will be looking into the feasibility of putting a sleep timer into it. Um, 
to get to the on-demand movies, you go back into the star key and you select movies on the option here. What's kind of cool with all this is look at Guardians of the Galaxy. A lot of recent movies, you can watch the trailers, um, save it for later, rent it in standard def and in HD. Uh, but they also have a you might also like section and you can also search by a director. Let's say you're a big fan of the director or you want to look into the um, different stars. You can pull up everything that that star's in or everything the director has directed. So that's a nice feature to be able to say, hey, you know, I like, um, let's see here. We'll just go Phil Lord. Let's see what else he's directed. Apparently only 21 Jump Street. We'll go to Lethal Gun. Um, Mel Gibson, and right here is all the Mel Gibson movies, shows, everything that he would have done will be uh, available. Expendable 3 and so forth. So let's pull up the trailer, that should demonstrate how quickly the on-demand content will load. If you're used to satellite um, services where it needs to download it in entirety before it plays, it's really nice to have the streaming. Quality is good, not sure how great that will look with my camera pointed at the TV but it is very nice. Um, you can, with all on-demand content that I've seen so far when it comes to rentable movies, you can pause it. Um, and you can rewind and fast forward. So that's a nice feature to remember. So we'll kind of keep scrolling through here. They have it broken up by all the categories you expect, horror, whatever. But then they also have collections. For instance, um, equal rights, car chases, gun um, gu uh, gumshoe, movies, New Year's Eve movies, better than the book, and so on, Christmas, all the things you could ever think to be put into a collection, they got quite a few, and it seems like they're adding a lot recently, um, I've noticed a lot of these collections have been popping up, so courtroom dramas, hidden eyes, it's all here, classic movies, current movies, a lot of them are here, everything seems to be for rent, I haven't actually seen anything actually available for sale, to buy it, but that may change in the future. So, on-demand content, really great at the moment, and they promise they're gonna bring in more. Um, the nice thing about two is if you go down here, we're currently looking at uh, Billy Madison. It says you may also enjoy these other movies. Um, and again, you can look at Adam Sandler and pull up all of his movies. So, on-demand content, really nice. Um, at any time, if you want to go back to live TV, just hit in the OK button when you're actually in a stream, will bring you to that, or you can keep backing out. We're right here still playing the um, trailer. We can go to Bloomberg and pull it up. Some channels seem to be a little faster than others in loading, um, but they all seem to load very well. Um, if you're used to a older satellite box, you notice how you know jumping channels sometimes can take a little while. Well, you'll it feels about the same as when I was a direct TV customer moving around between channels. Um, kind of covering a few of the things. Uh, right now I'm in Bloomberg, but if I were to hit the back button um, when I was in another one, let's go to Cartoon Network. It works like a back button on your old TV remote. It'll allow you to go from whatever channel you're currently in to jump back and look at the older one. Right here, and now I'm going back to Bloomberg just by hitting the back channel. And there it is, Bloomberg. No need to launch it and go all this back. So if you're watching a couple sports games like I do um, and you're jumping around between different games, it's nice not to have to go into this menu, scroll through, find the sports channel, and go to it. So uh, Overall, I've been very pleased. Um, the quality is good. The on-screen menus are nice. I really like the ability to um, say if I'm a big fan of a particular show, and I want to find out more about a particular actor um, or actress and so forth, you know, shows they may be in, I like the ability to just say, okay, well, let's, let's check out this actress. And then right here is everything currently available, TV and movie shows. And I can scroll through it. So right there is the movies that she's in, and right here is the TV shows. Um, even though it says rental at the top, if I just hit play on it, it will go straight into it without having to pay anything. Um, it does go off your credit card that you've applied. I haven't found a way to tell it to ask for a pen. So at this moment, be careful if you have kids because they may 
quickly rack up a big bill by renting a lot of movies. Um, I've sent in a question um, about that. If there's a way to limit that, I haven't received a response yet. Check our written review on cordcuttersnews.com. Sorry about the abrupt cutoff of the last review. My camera sadly ran out of power. Uh, just kind of wrapping up the Roku 3. Very impressed. Uh, no issues browsing between channels, switching back and forth. Um, in the last week, I've only had two crashes on it or get hung up on something or give an error message. Restarting the stream always seems to resolve all the errors that come up on the uh, Sling TV app. So, very reliable, very impressed. Now let's take a look at it on a Nexus 7. Well, let's kind of compare the differences and give you a quick walkthrough on it. This is a Nexus 7 Generation 2 with the front and back camera on it. Let's launch the app. Um, and You'll notice it looks very familiar to the Roku version. The user interface seems to be very consistent. On the bottom, you can scroll through all the different shows. At the top up, um, you can go to different channels. Clicking on it once will bring up the menu. Holding it down without sliding your finger around will launch the actual channel's um, on-demand menu and it'll allow you to play different shows. Uh, of course, if you ever want to go back, you just tap the back button on your tablet or phone. Works exactly the same. So let's go watch some ESPN. We just tap on the current show right now. It brings up a little menu to say watch it now. Now, if it was on another show that would allow rewind, it would give you the option to start it over from the beginning. But because watch ES or ESPN does not allow you to restart from the beginning right now, it just gives you the option to start it. So tap on it, we'll bring up the pause, fast forward. Um, down here in the bottom right was closed captioning and internet quality. Um, and if you tap on the guide button again, it brings you back to the guide to see what's coming up. Um, let's kind of take a look at some of the different quality, give you an idea how quickly it can go. Let's go to Boomerang and select a random show. Right there, Tom and Jerry, hit watch. Very quick, very powerful, right at fingers um, touch. You can go up here and select the different packages again, just like you could on the Roku. You can scroll through the different channels if you want them all. The menus in the top left will bring up your different options, movies. You can go into your on-demand section here and rent something just like you would on your Roku. So, highly recommend it on the Nexus 7 and Android phones. Um, the app just works smoothly. The last device we're going to look at is the G-Box Q, a very popular Android TV box uh, for it running Kodi, but the important part for us is it runs Android as the operating system. So when this becomes a public release, you can just go into your Google Play Store, download the app to your Android TV box, in this case the G-Box Q, and install it and hit play just like you would on your tablet. Works very well, the remote is a uh, very smooth interface, no real issues I've experienced. Um, occasionally there'll be a hiccup and it will crash out more than others, but maybe by once or twice and restarting the stream has always fixed the issues, just like with the Roku 3. Um, but I've been very impressed with it. So it loads up and it remembers what the last station I was on was, so it brings in to the uh, Home and Garden channel. Um, you can scroll through all the different channels across the bottom. Hitting the menu key on the station uh, will bring up the different options, close captions, movies, watch list, TV. Let's check out the watch list. So right here it shows the movies that we have. We'll select uh, the Lego movie and we'll resume it from where we left off. I wasn't that far in and as it authorizes. A little bit slower. Um, now with that said, I'm also struggling with poor internet connection, um, but it still works pretty well. I got about three down right now out of 10 I pay for. But as you saw, a little lower quality and then it jumps up and buffers. Hitting the OK button um, on your Android box works just like it would with uh, hitting the OK button on the Roku. It brings up the menu, allows you to select items. So we're going to go back to ESPN, bring up some live TV, and there we go. 
Uh, buffering mildly longer than it is on a Roku or on the tablet, but not by much. This is a quad-core box. Very happy with it. So good news to all the Android TV users out there. You have full access to Sling. Everything that I've been able to do on the Roku, I can do here. If I go over to a channel across the top, Home and Garden, I press up. I have access to the on-demand. Let's check out something here. Um, Caribbean Life. Let's see what they have here. They have one episode, 30 minutes. Let's play it and try it out. Now, one thing to remember this, some of these are like on demand from Amazon, where it's just the show. Some of it seems like they took a live feed, commercials and all. Yep, here we go. It, this is showing the end of the previous episode. And a few of these, he's there. If you have any questions or comments about any of this review, any of the devices or overall, leave them on our YouTube page. Leave them on our website, courtcarsnews.com. We'll do our best to answer them. And we hope that this review has helped you make a decision if you're interested in Sling TV or not.